Hi everyone, so today I'll be trying out some of uh, LGS Creative's new November collection items. Um, I did bring out several of them, I'm going to use a few, I just wanted to show you some of the different options of the different uh, styles they have there. So, um, they did send these items free of charge for my review, and of course all opinions are my own, and any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchase items through those links. So thanks for using those if you can. Again, description box is just under the title, on the show more, or... Um, however it is, depending on how you're watching. But today I want to work with the Spotlight um, stencils. I did bring out the dot to dot stencil I used last time. That's why it has a little bit of ink on there. So um, I'm going to use that one too. But I want to show you, they have these new, uh, what they call Spotlight stencils. A 6x6 six six stencil that helps you center your card front or whatever is that you're... Um, uh, stenciling or playing with with this uh, particular set and uh, up to six inches and then of course I mean you can still use it on something bigger if you're just you know eyeballing where you're putting it but it does have etch marks and we'll play with those in just a minute um, doing something a little bit different there's a square there's a heart and I think today I'm gonna try out the rectangle and the circle we'll try two different ones so you can kind of see what they do um, and then I also brought out some stamps to kind of play with that against the stenciling doing some different things, something similar to this, something a little bit different from that too. So uh, what I'm going to do is, well, I brought out some stamps to play with that. I need this one for the sentiment, and then I brought out, um, so that's a floral silhouette and floral solid layering stamp set. And I brought out the All Occasion Word Dies and the Everyday Word Dies. Um, I'm going to use one of them, but I just wanted to show you them again, in case you didn't see when I had shown the full collection the other day. Again, a uh, really cute font on that, and then they have the background dies for them too. So what I'm going to do is cut down some paper. I think I'm still going to make them both A2 size because that's my preferred card size. But let's open this up and I'll show you what we got here. So ooh, let me open this up. So what happens is they have these etch lines on them. Super easy to see through and line up. So let me grab, let's see. Oh, perfect. I was going to say I was going to get an A2 card base, which we'll use. But we have this one. This is a five inch card base and like I said this goes up to six inches so the five inch marks are like right here so as you can see right in here if you had a five inch, half inch square I suppose you can still line it up with these corners although those corners like what's showing the five and a half inch or this area I believe is probably for your A2 card but hopefully you can see there and now you have it perfectly lined up in a five inch square card if you want that uh, rectangle there and let me grab my A2 size. So again, six inch, five and a half I would say because you do have the five and a half line. It's just um, etched out softly on the corners because that's really for your fi yeah, like your standard A2 size. And then the five inch square and then we have a smaller one that looks maybe probably four or three and a half inch and then a smaller one even. And then this is your standard A2 size card front. And you can line it up right in these you can see the tallest line kind of goes down this way. So if you do that, you have your A2, and you would be perfectly centered within your A2 size if you wanted to ink right onto there, or you have a whole card front or however. I'm probably going to trim my card front down just a little bit, so I'm going to use the guides, but just kind of eyeball it anyway. But it'll still be pretty um, centered, right? And then um, they even have it so you can go this opposite direction. And so let's say you want it to be a rectangle that's more of a landscape mode. You have that, or if you're using your whole card as landscape and you want that up and down, you know, there's different ways to play around with this one. And then she includes the negatives. So this little piece that got cut out, we are going to play around with two today just to make it more clear. But let's say you have your card there, but let's say you place this. What I would do is stick that down, move this away, and now this is perfectly centered. If I want to ink up around it, um, it's centered. And I can remove that, and then when I bring this back, I can still do some more stenciling or stamping or whatever it is that you want to do. So uh, lots of fun ways to play with these. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I was going to do an A2. Let's go for it. Why not? We'll use this uh, five inch square card too. So I'm going to trim down the paper to just smaller than five inches square, probably four and seven eighth inch square. And then another one for the A2 card, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. So I'm going to trim that piece of paper down to like four and... 
an eighth by five and three eighths. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I have my papers. I'm gonna put this one to the side. We'll use that one with the circle. I brought out some colors to ink up with, and again, it's just smaller than my standard two size card front at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So when I line it up here, you know, I'm just gonna split the difference all around the edges from what I cut because otherwise I would line it up right on the lines there. And then I'm just going to bring this over. I don't think it's going to get that messy because we're really focusing in here, but either way, I'm just going to tape this down just to help me hold my stencil. And if we want to tape down the paper underneath a little bit, maybe we can do that too. So I'll put a little piece of tape there. Oh, I'm not sure how that came through. Just a little bit better. So again, we have this little open area here. And what I plan to do is do like an ombre or a blend from red, orange to yellow. Now you don't really need to do all three colors. If you only have like red and yellow, you'll get that orange in the center. And I am using a little blending brush, which I don't know that I've ever actually done this to do a blend. So even though they're called blending brushes, right? Let's go red. I am going to deepen that in just a minute. I just want to start off real light. And hopefully that doesn't drive people nuts. I use the green <laughs> handle for orange ink. And if I had thought about it, I would have color coded those. Make it easy to spot, but I did not. And then yellow. Ooh, that yellow is really nice. Pops really nicely. I think I have enough yellow. I need to come in with more orange. Let's try a little more yellow. And I'm being very gentle. When I started right in the center, I don't want like a spot just in the center, so I'm being very, very gentle with this. And then we'll bring in some more red because we do need definitely need more red. Okay, and I'll just keep doing the same thing until I'm happy with like how much of each color we have here. Let me go up like that and make a strong corner edge, should I say. Something like that. A little bit more orange. There we go. And then the yellow. Just a little more of that. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe do a little more blending here. Soften some of this up. Alright. Oh, look at that so pretty. Now if you left this here and you wanted to, what I would do is do some stamping and you would just bring your stamp in and it'll just stamp in that area, which I'll do probably with the next one, but with this one I'm just going to do some stamping off the side. So let me go wash this off and I'll be so right back. Put the card front, set it up on here so it wouldn't waste your time watching, <laughs> putting on a precision press. And there we go. I would like some stamps and I'm just going to kind of plan out and see where I would want my sentiment, you know, because obviously we need to make room for that. So if I had this, like, let's say you're so special to me, and then like a little, little spriggy. Oh, so of course you can do several sprigs, you know. Oh, it's okay. Let's do this one. It's a little more substantial since it's going to be by itself. So I have my words up there somewhere. I just want this like here and somewhere. Okay. And these are photopolymer stamps and um, they do have a dispersion layer on them so they feel a little bit sticky at first. So like sticky enough to pick up your paper. <laughs> so I'm going to put that there. Put another stamp just in case. Another magnet, sorry. So if you feel it is sticky, if you would like, you can just clean that off with a little um, soap and water, maybe a little alcohol and then soap and water. Um, rub it on your ink pad really well so it just uh, gets nice and juicy. Take that off. 
touch it to your sweater. Sometimes people will touch it on their clothes just to get the stickiness off. Whatever it is that you want. So I'm just going to go for it, but um, in case you have an issue with that. Um, that's Those are just a few ways to get that dispersion layer off. And then once you've been using it, it just comes off. It's just from when it was manufactured. So really nice, strong um, pressure. Again, since they're photopolymer, they're like... They're pretty hard, you know what I'm saying, so they don't squish. If you're using acrylic stamps, you really don't want to push too, too hard because they will ghost and they'll kind of spread out a little bit because they're soft. Um, okay, and then we have our word, or our sentiment. Ooh, I love that. I mean, can you imagine just making several of these, having them ready, and maybe don't put your sentiment until you know what you want, but you have the other artwork there? That'd be really great. And I just eyeballed that, so let me look at this grid and see how straight those words are. That's pretty good. Yeah. So same thing. I'm just going to really scrub, 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 scrub. Um, oh, hmm. So I've showed you guys, you know, I was kind of rubbing and you have like a modded, lo a modeled look. But if you were to just take your ink pad and scrape it across like that, I don't know if you can see, there's like lines and you'll see them right now. Why not? Just to add a little something else. And they kind of show up. I don't know if you can see like the little lines that come through. Either way, it's because I did a lot of the ch -ch -ch modeling. Um, but how pretty is that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's one card front note card. And you want to put this right on the card front? Definitely you can do that. Looks lovely. Um, lo okay, so I'll just put that to the side for now. I'm going to clean up a little bit, and then we'll do the stenciling on the 5-inch square card. I'll okay, be right back. So for this one, I'm going to bring this over. And that is my card front. Again, a little bit smaller than 5x5, five five, so um, about 4 and 7 eighths, 4 and 7 eighths. I guess I could just say 4 and 7 eighths inch square. But we're going to take this guy, and this time we are going to use the negative and the other the actual stencil. And so what I'm going to do is line this up just so I can see exactly where it would be centered. You know, and again, I had to kind of split the difference because I did cut my card front a little smaller. So like there and there. And then I'm going to do, let me see, oh, I have some repositional but adhesive in this. And I'm just going to go like this just to get a little of that down on my card front. Take this guy. So again, I'm centered. I'm going to pop this in here. Okay. I'm going to remove that, and now my card front has that mask centered there, and I'm going to use it as a mask, so I'm going to take the dot stencil, just pop it on here, you know, wherever, tape that down just a little bit to help me out, and I think I'm going to use, like, this purple Miss, Mrs. Periwinkle, she is married, here we go, <laughs> and purple handle, why not? <laughs> and I'm just going to come in and put in some purple. Now we have the stencil on top of stencil, right? Or the negative. So I'm just going to blend into the whole thing. And that little circle in the middle is going to help us out. Circles are very interesting to stencil into because depending on how you do it, they get that little edge that's a little bit darker. And so if I come in this way, it, when I come back, that's when it gets that darker edge, and it'll be like on this side. So if you want that to be a certain way, or you can really play that up if you really pay attention. You can say, oh, I want things to have like the shadow and the darkness this way. Really fun. Right now I'm just kind of going for it. <laughs> Let's see here. And I don't know if you can see where it doesn't really ink. It's because that circle stencil, that negative is there. This little guy needs a little more color. I always like to try to get all the ink off and into my project, so that's kind of why I take another second to really rub the ink in. I think that's good. And with that, I'll find this little purple dots. Um, you know what, actually, just so we're exactly on the same page where I put my stencil, oh my goodness, here it is. Uh, what I'm going to do is, help. 
hold that down. I'm going to bring this guy back and just line it up with that stencil that was there. Just cover it up. And again, a little tape to help me with that one. And then I'm going to pop this circle out. There it is. And remove that little repositionable adhesive. So I'm going to go rinse both of these guys off and then we're going to do some more inking. Okay, I'll be right back. And then I'm going to take um, some pink ink and just do a little inking. Now again, you can just have that circle in there. It looks really great. Take a little bit of the pink ink and just come around the edges. Again, I always start off a little bit gentle, just to kind of see where we're going. <laughs> I'm kind of doing a little bit more heavier on this side, leaving a little area that's a little bit more like a spotlight, a little bit more white. Because what I think I'm going to do is do some some stamping over here. And this time I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> and um, I mean I could bring up this whole thing and put it on my um, stamp there, my precision tool. But I am not. Let's see if we can... I'm going to take that guy and place it on the stamping block if I can find one. There we go. I usually try to use stamping blocks that are the same size as the stamp. It makes it easier and to control and kind of see what's going on, but I just grabbed this guy. Now again, let's just ink it up really, really good. Really well. And I'm just going to go for it. And this time I'm going to give it a second because... Again, I'm not using a precision press or anything, so I want to make sure I'm really getting that, and that looks really great. Just clean that guy off. That's good. I kind of want them going like this way and that, you know, so this one's going the other direction. I like that. Just a little bit more out here. And maybe just going like here. Again, because they're silhouette black on black, they'll just melt together and look like a little bouquet. Oh, looks wonderful. Oh my gosh. And maybe that little piece of curve in on that side. Why not? And I'm putting the little stem end like out of nowhere because that way it looks more natural. Ooh. All right, let's right on there. And just make sure that's really stamping there. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go rinse these off and I'll be right back. Oh, I guess I could have rinsed this off while I was rinsing the other one, so I will be right back. I'm going to rinse that off. And in the meantime, I'm going to die cut one of the sentiments look how pretty that is and it just looks like it came out of nowhere I love the way we just left like the middle part kind of a little brighter it gives it just more dimension and let's do I've got your back why not that's a fun sentiment and I think I'm just going to do the lettering part and not the background so that it's just really uh, sweet right here I was going to cut out a black paper, but we'll see. Either way, I'll run it through some kind of whatever paper I fancy, and I'll be right back. I actually decided to cut it from this really fun mirror paper. Why not? It kind of gave me an 80s feel with the purple and the pink and, like, this kind of soft blue. Um, I guess it's more holographic paper than mirror, isn't it? Let's get that last little bit out. Come on, guy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
There we go. Um, okay, so we have our card bases here. And this one I'm just going to stick down like that. If you want to pop it up with some dimensionals, because it's just like a note card, you can definitely do that for a little extra dimension. And then this one, I'm just going to glue down right there with I've Got Your Back. Just get some glue on this. I'm going to stick that down, then I'll stick them both down to their respective cards, okay? And I will be right back. When I do this, I always like to take off the excess. Now, either I put glue on my back of my hand and then dip them into it, or if I do this, I take the excess off on the back of my hand, because what happens is once you lay it down, it'll want to squeeze out and it gets on your pretty metallic paper and you have to clean it up. So just to help avoid that a little bit, just kind of pat some of that off. And then we can go. Okay. And I'll be right back. Okay, so there they are two um, simple but very different cards. Again, with just playing around with those stencils. Uh, similar, you know, with the uh, spotlight here, but a little different with that um, stenciling around the whole uh, edge of that. Uh, I mean, it's just so cute. Love the look of this. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, LGS Care, for sending these items for review. Hopefully. So I hope I showed you some different uh, techniques that you can use with these uh, stencils, you know, um, using them as masks, as obviously stencil, as a spotlight, all those different things. So thanks for watching, guys. All the images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.